Hello, welcome to the release present where we break new grounds each time and each this time we're going to venture in the foray of the young, the trendy TikTok. You heard about it, you're wondering what it's about. You're afraid to go there and be called a boomer or God knows what. Don't don't worry, don't worry. It's a welcoming environment especially for D&D and tabletop RPG fans. I've got Four, not three, not two, four amazing guests tonight to tell you everything you wanted to know about TikTok. And I believe in our audience, we have some relatives of my guests. So that's going to be extremely, <laughs> extremely interesting. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> also, yeah, I wanted to say you're doing the right thing tonight by tuning with us who are doing a live thing rather than watch a prime minister do something or something pre-recorded. On that, let's leave the shores of Great Britain. Anna, could you introduce yourself? Um, first of all, th really, really thank you for inviting me. Uh, as I said, I'm Hannah. Online, I usually go by Alekai or Alekai Wonderland, if Alekai is taken or too short or other kind of magical things. I am a Finnish LARPer, mainly, and I've joined TikTok last year at some magical point, and I have been playing Dungeons and Dragons since 2009-ish, and been DMing Dungeons and Dragons since 2011 or 2012, on and off, kind of. And Work of Darkness also. So also a bit. But there I mainly played. I haven't really game mastered that or, store, or been the storyteller for those. But I, I had a few campaigns going on, but I never figured out schedules and stuff with players. But it still has a little, little dark place in my heart. Nice. Well, if you're looking for a fool who tries to make TikToks who are not about D&D popular, well, go check my own account and the yeah, hashtag D&D yes but no, and you will find just that. Kestrel, what about you? Hi, uh, I'm Kestrel. I uh, started my TikTok account like a month ago. I actually had my anniversary, uh, one month anniversary on the 4th of May, um, and celebrated that by watching Star Wars for the first time. Um, and I've been playing D&D since about 2017, around. Uh, for my group of friends uh, that I started playing with, I am the dreaded forever DM, uh, where I am always relegated to the role of DM, but I've recently uh, been a player in other games and have a wild uh, set of memories and experiences from those as well. Uh, online, you can find me uh, under the name of Oat Cookie, spelled with an I at the end, uh, or if that's taken, Otis Clues. Cool. I've heard that uh, you were brought to TikTok uh, and even Tabletop RPG through a show which is very popular on TikTok, uh, at The Adventure Zone. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's how I got into D&D uh, &D in the first place. Uh, the podcast, The Adventure Zone, run by the McElroy brothers um, and their father. Uh, when they didn't even know how to play D&D themselves, they set about making an actual play co podcast um, that I picked up on sort of halfway through their first campaign, and I instantly fell in love with it. I loved the role play side of things, um, how deep the story for it got, um, and have only recently learned that there are actual rules to the game. <laughs> cool. Robin, what about you? Hi. I am Robin. I usually go by Roulette Cos or Robin Roulette on any kind of social media. Um, I've been cosplaying for about five years and only been playing D&D for coming up to one year now. I've DM'd a few games and I've currently got a really long ongoing campaign. And I'm a resident dice goblin. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. No more. <laughs> And yeah, I tend to just make random cosplay content on TikTok, which usually ends up with me cosplaying one of my D&D &D characters, or usually Taco from the Adventure Zone. Amazing. We've got cosplayers, fans of uh, World of Darkness, D&D, &D, the, the Adventure Zone cosplayers again. It's, uh, we're covering all the grounds. We, we don't need an extra guest, do we? Or maybe we do. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, go ahead, introduce yourself. <laughs> okay, hi, I'm um, I'm Jake. I tend to go by JasonV131 on TikTok or Jake Johansson673 on Instagram. Uh, I have kind of most of the time they've been taken, so I tend to try and sort uh, switch things out. 
Um, I am also a Dice Goblin. I played D&D for about uh, from three to five years. And I've had, and like Kestrel, I am a forever DM. I have only <laughs> just managed to escape the clutches of being a forever DM. Um, I have about five campaigns under my belt that I have run for about each one being a year. Nice. So, um, all in here is just trivia. And like Robin, I am also a dice goblin. Uh, also, I have a set of metal dice, and I'm very proud of those. Um, yeah, I have only been cosplaying for about a month from when I started TikTok. So I'm fairly new to the cosplaying front. Amazing. Uh, I forgot to say, we thank you very much to the RPG Academy for hosting this show. Uh, it's a great network. I recommend to check the rest of their content. Normally, this uh, this should be a family-friendly, especially since apparently we got family in the audience again. Uh, it should be a family-friendly show, but I want to test that. Why do my guests have to say if I say something like, oh, oh, I don't know about you. Oh. Right. <laughs> yeah, they didn't fall into my trap. This is a obscure reference to TikTok, which my, maybe we'll explain later. So I'm uh, going through my little structure. So yeah, actually, TikTok, was it, what is it? Um, I'm sure there's some people in the chat room with us who maybe have seen some of them on Twitter or maybe they don't have any clue what it might be. They might think it's a new board game. Um, Kestrel, how would you describe TikTok to... How do you describe that to your friends and family? Oh, my friends and family don't know I'm on TikTok yet. Um, and if everything goes according to plan, that will stay that way. Um, no, <laughs> I would describe TikTok as just like this really nice video sharing app where you know, literally anyone with a phone and an idea can just sort of uh, create a video very quickly, very easily and share it for the world to see and get interest from like similar communities that they're, you know, trying to be a part of. Great. Uh, Anna, what would you add to that? What's your own take on this? Well, obviously I agree on the video sharing part and also how there's really a great community there. But I also, what I love about TikTok is the fact that it really builds on your own creativity and what you can self do yourself with your own content, but also kind of what content you can find. Like, for example, I've been doing a lot of OC cosplays all of a sudden because of TikTok, because suddenly I had use for them outside of like LARPing and stuff where it's more limited, but you can find Maybe it's worth ones. explaining what OC is, because I found out about that only after a while on TikTok. Oh, true. Uh, OC stands for original character. So essentially, I make my own characters that are currently purely for TikTok. Like, it's a character, like, for example, I have this little fey girl who runs around, and I have a post apocalypse character that should have been at a LARP that didn't happen called Knight. And I just create storylines with them, create their personalities, and they are just my characters, essentially. So, original character, that's what OC stands for. Great. Robin, what about your, do you have yourself original characters and how, how do you describe TikTok? So TikTok for me is just kind of a space for people to make and share content like around the world. So yeah, it's a nice video sharing app and I've met quite a few of my friends through TikTok. And I tend to do the same as Hannah and cosplay most of my OCs on TikTok because where else am I going to show them off at this point? <laughs> You're not wrong. Mm. Yeah. I have not realized the issue with throwing my dice all the way around the room. There are dice everywhere. You've Robin, your could, could you check on Zoom if you can raise a little bit the volume of your microphone because you come through a little bit lower than uh, the, the rest. So you I can try. max it out. Jake, in the meantime, uh, anything to add on what TikTok is? Uh, following what everyone else said, TikTok is a... It, well, it is an app. It is a platform for people to share videos and to share their own creativity. Uh, I myself have made quite a few friends um, on TikTok. Uh, for instance, I actually made a D&D &D role-playing TikTok party named The Wayfaring Strangers. We actually gave ourselves a name on TikTok as well. We actually have a hashtag. We have a bit of a storyline on it. And on top of that, I've also been part of uh, other cosplay content. Um, I also do my own OCs. I have probably too many to count at this point. Um, it's just like, once you get the idea, just keep rolling with it. Um, but yeah, I tend to cosplay my own original characters in TikTok 
example, videos are between 15 seconds to a minute long. And that, a lot you can do in a minute for all intents and purposes, really, especially with the audios that get played. I guess that's, you, you got a good point there because I was about to ask, okay, it's a video sharing app, but then how is that different from Instagram, which has a video feature, or Facebook or YouTube, which is dedicated to, um, to video as well? Oh, TikTok is different from than those platforms. Uh, anyone want to have a go at that? Well, the interesting thing about TikTok is it's primarily video. Um, you scroll through uh, t different videos from your For You page, uh, just all the content that's directed towards you. Um, and on top of that, like the unique thing about this uh, video sharing app is, as uh, Jacob already said, you can use sort of pre-installed sounds that people have either uploaded themselves or that have been uploaded by the app developers to then put your own spin on what other people are already doing. So you get from the outside what may seem like very similar content, but the intricacies and like differences between them can, you know, make them apply to one uh, sort of sense of humor or to a completely different one. I believe it's, uh, it's tied to the origins of TikTok or predecessor, I don't know what's the right word, because and it's still a place where there's a lot of lip syncing, people dancing over or or lip syncing a song, uh, making a choreography over a, a bit of music. And what you see is a, a lot of people starting doing that with sections of um, comedy stand-ups or extract. Yesterday I found out I was watching a Gravity Fall and I realized that one of the songs I use is from Gravity Fall, uh, the one which says what does it say? It says um, Whoa, this is worthless. It's less than one. <laughs> yeah. yeah <that> one. <laughs> I've actually used that sound in one of my videos before. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've I've used um I don't know if anyone's seen the the parody of Robin Hood where it's like the men in tights, tight tights. When uh, it's Robin Hood facing little John. I've used that as an OC to say I'm like I'm picking on a noble and teaching him the the measure of nobility and humility by pushing him into into muddy water in a in a random <laughs> random town that I've, I've wandered into and um it's quite fun to do in all honesty because you get to just almost like perform improv on on a stage without having to actually be on stage it's a bit about having a, a spin which is fresh on something which has been repeated already to death uh on by other people you give it your own spin you tie it to a hobby which is more yours in our case D and D uh, and tabletop RPG and even your views of the the hobby. Actually, it's a good take, uh, Jake. You had to to describe one of your videos. Uh, Robin, could you describe one of the videos you made and you were kind of proud about it? You thought it was especially funny or interesting. Well, Knowing there's funny. nothing worse than explaining a joke, to be honest, <laughs> which makes TikTok <laughs> difficult to explain. Yeah. Is my mic any better? Uh, it's a bit low still. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. much yeah. better. Yay. I grabbed my actual microphone. Oh, nice. You got a blue Ooh, Yeti. Fancy. Yeah. Nice. Proper podcaster. It on YouTube as well. <laughs> oh. um, well. Most of my videos are usually in cosplay. So I tend to like use my, like use audios carefully to kind of Put my OC's personality into the video. So one of them I'm most proud of is just it's kind of a duet between two of my characters who are cousins and I just felt like the amount of time I spent on it was a bit too much for what I made but I'm still really proud of it because it's just the two of them singing and one of them just being like do I have to do this kind of thing and the other just having a really good time. <laughs> I love doing those with uh, you in one side of the screen and then you do the opposite side and you, you change a bit the way you remove your glasses or you do something that's a, a classic thing. It's a, it's a fun thing. You, you, you're you a little director. You, you, you can produce a little story in a very condensed format. Anna, you, you put a lot of uh, dedication and energy. I mean, everybody here does it, but uh, I, uh, Anna... The, Anna, I find she puts it like to 11. Uh, tell us oh. about your videos. Oh, it's oh, honestly, it's, it's, I make it look a lot like I put a lot of effort in them, whilst it's just like chucked things together, really. But um, 
Like, uh, as I said, I also do mainly like OC cosplays and I do really random things at the moment because I'm still kind of trying to figure out what do I want to do, what's actually fun. So now it's more like, okay, I find a collection of audios and I figure out like, okay, these will go for that character. And then I just put on the clothing and film as much as I can. I, on average, film like 10 to 15 videos a time when I'm in costume because I do them kind of really rapidly. Because what I've, at least for me, what I've learned is the fact that there's no such thing as perfection with your videos. Like you do to the point that they're good. And it's something that I've also seen from like other people's videos is like, they don't have to be perfect. Obviously like those really high quality contents are awesome, but that's not what the average viewer kind of sees. So I've been like, no, nah, this is good enough. This is really funny. I'll <laughs> deal with this. And then I just chuck it out into the world like one video a day. So I don't have to do this again for two weeks. <laughs> It's kind of very, it's, it's very liberating, I find, as someone who's been dabbling a bit with, with the format. And, and as a consumer, it's interesting to see that when you see, you know, established celebrities, oh, by the way, I'm, a, I'm on a Bouncy uh, lattice <laughs> ball for this. See, that's how professional I am. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of half-putting when you see, I don't know, Will Smith, Kevin Hart, they, they show up on TikTok and uh, you don't know what's happening. There's someone holding the phone for them. Uh, you're like, yeah, no, it's, it's nice to see more. Yeah, it's, you, it's people like you and me who are doing that. Yeah. And that's definitely kind of what, at least for me, is more attractive to TikTok compared to, for example, Instagram. I don't know how it's for you, know, you others on that point. Um, Instagram, yeah, um, TikTok I find more open, uh, the fact that you can actually respond to people quicker. Uh, with Instagram, I tend to not go on because, yeah, you can drop a video, you can drop a picture, but with TikTok, it's actually, you can, uh, at some point, you can make actually make someone's day, like they might be having a really bad day, and you can actually make them smile or laugh, and it, that's, a bit, that's a bit more rewarding than just going... Hey, look what I'm doing! Click, and then just sending it onto Instagram, and it's just a stilled photo that will stay there for the rest of the time on a digital footprint. And then you go on TikTok, and you do a video of of um, I don't know if you've seen some people going uh, when they're on this for you page, and they go, hey, "Hey, wait a second, take a moment, take a breath, shoulders down, head up. You're important. You matter." I've actually done one of those videos, and the amount of people who have liked that video is quite impressive, and it is quite rewarding watching people go i love i love your content please keep going this is great you made my day it's always nice to see that sort of thing because you actually made someone's day especially now oh yes that's a very huge thing it's very interesting as a platform i find it's, it's very bare bones you know you don't within the platform you don't really share videos except when you, you do a reaction or a duet which we can explain mm -hmm. later what, what they are uh it, there's a lot of stuff someone uh, I spent a lot of time trying to explain someone was telling me, so that's the new Facebook. And I was like, yeah, but no, 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 because you, 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 you either watch a video or you create a video, but this, that's it. You don't put information about yourself. I mean, on one hand, you don't put information about yourself. You don't put your date of birth, where you studied and all this stuff. Mm. But on the other hand, it's because it's so bare bone and sort of, I guess, a bit difficult to get on it's sort of intimate. It's sometimes intimate with people. Like one person I follow is a, a CNN uh, broadcaster and he records his video, but you, you have a very direct contact with that person and people have got a very direct contact with you and people share very intimate thoughts also on, I mean, you, you were joking about that Kestrel that you hope your friends and family, you, you won't find out uh, about TikTok, but <laughs> It's, you know, it's, it's very liberating to be in this environment of people who share intimate thoughts because they are not concerned that they will be heard by people they don't really trust. No, it's exactly that, because there's a different feeling of being able to talk to a camera, sending a message out to people on the internet, people you've never spoken to before, um, having them come back in, as opposed to trying to share very intimate details with your parents. Almost like they don't feel the same in terms of like what sort of emotional outcome uh, or result of it. Um, and it just feels, as you said, like way more freeing to have your own space, to like say what you're thinking. Um, 
or just do what you want to do on this little app. Cool. Robin, do you have any feelings uh, about that? Uh, I have a few of my parents' friends following me on TikTok. And oh. that's incredibly scary. <laughs> no. One of my co-workers followed me at one point. I oh. think she still does. And oh dear. <laughs> I really don't know how to take that. Because on one hand, it's like, yeah, you have all this creative freedom and you can express yourself without, you know, repercussions in your actual personal everyday life. But on the other hand, as soon as you have someone close to you following you, it's like, oh, now do I have to tailor my content so that it doesn't offend them? Mm. Mm -hmm. Just getting the balance right. It has a way of coming back to you if someone in real life you know, follows you and sees every word you're saying. Yeah. They then come up to you the next day and you're like, hey, you made this video. Why? Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Something very real. That. Instant, instant internal screaming that, <laughs> that happens. Yeah. I think oh, I it's saw a... you dressed up on this app called TikTok. <laughs> I didn't it's want to have it's, it's, it's a classic joke on TikTok to make a video of <laughs> colleagues and friends finding out about you on TikTok. Uh, Robin, how did you find out about TikTok? Oh, did you join? A... Um, I joined back in 2017, and I honestly couldn't say how I found the app. I think I was just kind of scrolling through another social media and I saw someone make a video and I was like, oh, I could do that. <laughs> and so I downloaded it and started scrolling and ended up making my own stuff. Anna, you had a similar experience? Yeah, for me, it's like, I, I actually can't remember where it was because I think it was exactly kind of like some cosplayer I follow on Instagram and they made a post like in their stories or something that I usually am more likely to watch if I'm on Instagram. And I was like, yeah, this is cool, but I want to see more of what they've done because obviously they don't post everything like everywhere. So I was like, yeah, but I want to see more of the videos they've done. So I was like, fine, I'll download it and just have a look and just kind of use it to kind of stalk or just like follow other creators and be like, oh my God, oh my God, these are so amazing. And then um, <laughs> it was all downhill <laughs> from there. <laughs> and then accidents happened and <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but suddenly I'm a TikToker. I tripped and all these videos came out. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I picked up my phone and suddenly videos. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Another classic joke, like first day on TikTok. What's this thing? One week on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, never listen to music the same afterwards because you do kind of the TikTok. Uh, oh, yeah, you start, you start yeah. Yeah. all the dance yeah. moves. <sighs> Jake, you cannot remember either from what I know. Um, honestly, uh, with everything going on, I was so bored that I was scrolling through Twitter and I just happened to stumble across, um, you know, you sometimes get like digital ads on Twitter that sometimes just pop up and just kind of go, oh yeah, take a look at this. And I comment, oh, what's this? And I sort of click, clicked on it, downloaded clicked it. clicked on those? I don't know yeah. why they ever clicked on those. <laughs> uh, I, to, no, to be fair, to bear in mind, a week, a week into everything going on, and literally my mind was just going, just click on it, just click on it, find something to do, find, <laughs> find something to do. And as soon as I got on the TikTok, I saw what the people were doing, and I sort of went, oh, I'll just put one video, you know, everyone's doing that. And a month later, and I've lost track of how many videos I've done. So... Kestrel, uh, you, the answer you gave me in advance to that uh, is that you, you went... You had very thorough research history and facts regarding TikToks in your answer. I thought it was very, very interesting. Well, okay, so... Uh, Something prior... about a, someone dying? A death? <laughs> so everybody compares TikTok to Vine, and after Vine was no longer a thing, compilations upon compilations came out, and that's how I spent a lot of my time last year, just like screwing through those when I didn't want to do schoolwork. Um, and then, you know, after a while, like these TikTok ones started coming out. It's like, I don't want to watch this. This isn't blind. I don't care. Then after a while, I was like, why not? I'll watch some of them. Um, and then my YouTube recommended uh, became D&D TikTok specifically. And I thought, oh, this is actually funnier than all, what I was watching before. And like Anna, it was just like, okay, I actually want to see more of what they're doing. So I'm going to make, I'm going to download the app now that like I have nothing else to do. Um, and then now I'm here flash forward to now and I have a few videos out, people comment for whatever reason, like people like what I do. 
it's wild. <laughs> oh, you got quite a few followers, I think. I mean, let's talk numbers. I, 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 <laughs> is, that, is that taboo on TikTok? I, it's, I know it's taboo with podcasters. We don't, we don't talk <laughs> numbers of viewers. You, you need to be in a very trustful envi- environment to start giving out numbers. But uh, yeah, you, you're 2000, Kestrel? <laughs> well, that's a funny thing I've noticed. Um, no matter how many followers you have on the app, I don't know if it's like this in different spheres, like outside of the D&D community, role playing, cosplay, what have you, people don't care about numbers. Like if somebody likes your content, they will comment, they will message you if you follow each other and it, you immediately become friends. I've had that experience like a number of times with people who have like 10k, 20k and I'm like, why are you talking to, I'm a speck of dust, <laughs> nothing. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's never felt like there's been a hierarchy due to like the follow account or like account that someone has. Yeah, I got an answer to a duet I did with a, oh, what's her name? I'm trying to remember the, the name of the person I first saw and brought me to touch. She was someone doing syncopated lip sync of uh, anime songs and she makes really weird faces and the way she moves it, it's... Uh... <laughs> Anyone re- knows her name? I'd like I, to remember. Uh, I think I'm familiar with it, but I don't know her name off the top of my head. But I, know, I don't but, think I know you. Tony, we don't remember the name. We name we know the the British <laughs> guy with the hat, <laughs> <laughs> the, the dentist who does that. Or uh, yeah, the I got an answer from the uh, young woman who lives in uh, in Japan, and she gave away the the recipe for a um, peanut butter and jam sandwich. For adults and i tried it and do it with her and it was very good and she replied to me and i was yeah she's got one hundred thousand and uh, <laughs> yeah. one million no i think she reached one million or something like that. Um, wow that's, that's amazing um, achievements <laughs> yeah um I, I had the uh similar experience in my first live stream i was doing my first live stream a couple of days ago to prepare for this i was doing almost like stress tests going ah oh, no I'll watch it. it'll be fine nine people joined and then a Star Wars TikToker who does really good cosplays and he made his own cosplay. He jumped in and I went, oh, he's, he's in, and he's now following me. What, what, is happening? what, what is happening? He's got way more followers than I am. Why is he he's cool. Why? Yeah, why yeah. is this cool person following me who's got awesome cosplay? Oh god, I remember. I remember the day like um, someone I watched from like YouTube compilations liked all my videos. I nearly had a heart attack then they followed me a bit later on and i was like face first in my chair like squealing just like what's going on <laughs> um i i i headbutted my desktop just kind of going what is happening <laughs> yeah i think this like the even worse part of that is like what's happened to me sometimes it's just been like i was like oh someone liked my video and then i'm like Oh, they look pretty cool, and I'm like, oh yeah, I follow them. They have like two hundred thousand something something followers, and then I'm like, wait, since when are we mutuals? Yeah. <laughs> and then you just flip. You go totally on, you hit the follow like, button, and it's like the mutual, and like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Pan- what Pandora's box did I just open to to have this happen? Yeah. Why am I suddenly being perceived by these people? What? It's wild. That's so unfair. You did that. That happened uh, organically for you. I had to comment on the a video of each of you to be mutuals and be able to send you a message to invite you <laughs> to this panel. That's scandalous. Had to work to be here. Sorry. <laughs> well, sorry. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I just no. had my duets turned off. I followed you first. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. But yeah, the, but you know, interesting bit, you know, these panels, I do them specifically, like a little constraint for me, I think it helps produce content which is original. My little constraint with those panels to take post strictly from Europe, the you know, continent, uh, the United Kingdom. And unlike Facebook or other platforms, you cannot search people by countries on TikTok. Right. So you, you need to enjoy a video, click on the person, Sometimes it's mentioned, uh, sometimes it's not, but then someone says, yeah, mate, and you're like, hmm, <laughs> this, <laughs> this have an Australian accent. He might be, or she might be from the United Kingdom. So, uh, table to on TikTok. Um, what sort of table to content 
do you find especially interesting on TikTok and cannot be found anywhere else? So, how, how different can they be? Uh, yeah, tell us maybe about one interesting content creator who might not be with us here, which you would recommend people to check out if they're, if they're fan of Dungeons and Dragons and so on. Uh, Robin? Oh, me first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're the one who speaks the least, I'm always going to start with you. Uh, um, so I tend to find what comes up on my For You page is mostly just skips put to music, which are incredibly entertaining. And the person I find coming up most is Tales of D&D. And he just usually like recounts his DM stories and it's usually about his players doing something dumb or new players getting into D&D and doing something dumb and him agreeing with them doing something dumb. And it's just kind of, it's been a kickstart into like me doing things dumb in my D&D campaigns and annoying my DM so much. One of the things you do is cosplay. And when I found out about cosplay on TikTok, I thought it was so fascinating. I mean, the idea that people reenact in character, in costume, scenes, from critical role for critters out there from the adventure zone maybe one day we'll do this podcast but uh maybe not too soon <laughs> and i know the shows i mean it, it's it's really uh, it's really uh, amazing uh, are there specific performer you you thought were interesting still robin i'm gonna keep that spotlight on you for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness and all the others can think very hard about the question I'm going to ask them. Just <laughs> blank. Just blank. Really, yeah, I don't really have a specific cosplayer I watch. I just tend to flick through the For You page, and it's usually full of D&D cosplayers doing their OCs. Um, I think Quincy's Tavern's come up quite a bit. That's a new one. Ooh, good one and as well. he's just really, he's really nice. He puts like loads of recipes up for like D&D themed food. Oh, um, nice. It's yeah, really they're good. they're they're all really really good. They're all really oh, good yeah. look, looking. Yeah. I've seen another tic, 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 TikToker, the name of a uh, nymph witch. She made the uh, the chocolate one in the pot, yeah. and she tried it. And apparently, it, her face reaction was that it was so good, and I really <laughs> want to try it. <laughs> it looks delicious. Yeah, I was tried the like the stew meat needle like really really far in the beginning, and oh my god, it's a staple in my kitchen now. Like I'm like. I will do it if, whenever I have the stuff for it. Oh. <laughs> now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tried doing it, uh, cooking TikTok videos. They are very tough to do. <laughs> you need to cook, yeah. mm. have your camera at the same time. It's really tough to edit. Oh, I can imagine, actually. Yeah. So we got cosplayers, so that's covered. Uh, what are the and we said uh, stories from people's tables. Uh, what else? What other type of tabletop RPG content can we find on TikTok? Um, I follow kind of like a, a couple of hashtags that are based around D and D and the cos cosplay community and TikTok in large. Um, Quincy's Tavern definitely one. Uh, the Meat of Magic is definitely another one that is a brilliant hashtag. It's so is actually it's huge i don't know how many like views or followers it has but it's like over two million uh, yeah, followers it, it is a huge following um and the woman who started it or who actually like started the meeting magic actually started with quest prompts uh other people started dressing up as npcs and started going well if you if you go over this way you'll find so and so um from the meeting magic i actually found the tipsy goblin which is how i actually found my D, &D party um, and also the Tipsy Goblin has quest prompts and uh, a collection of uh, cosplayers who have their own original audios that they actually perform these um, these characters together. And they are so well put together. And like, for instance, one of my favorite people uh, who um, I hope I don't get the name wrong, she made it and I'm really sorry if she's watching this. Um, <laughs> Nineteen Galen YX, she actually created the Tipsy Goblin and then you got Sergeant JW who plays Graven and then you got uh, Lycan who plays Jasper and a bunch of other people who I follow and they are all 100% great. Um, also speaking of which, Tipsy Goblin actually got their own original soundtrack that they now play in each one of their um, uh, videos. That's actually really cool that actually went that far. 
which is fantastic. So, yeah. Did anyone uh, for the four of you ever uh, did something with pulling the audio of one of your own videos? Um, yes. Tell us. No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that was so long ago, and I, I wish it never existed. Oh, oh no. sorry. It happened. <laughs> it's fine. It was a it was a Dango Rompa thing. And it was like an original Danganronpa character, and they just made like an introduction video, and I hate it. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh dear. It was so bad. Like, looking back on it, it's just the worst thing I ever did. <laughs> oh no! So, Anna, anything on your side? Um, um, well, I haven't followed, like, or well, I follow the, like, Meet of Magic and everything, but I haven't really done anything with kind of those tags. I am so tempted to do so, but I'm a perfectionist when it comes to characters. I'm like, I need to pick a character first out of my insane backlog. But like other creators that do just really amazing stuff, I obviously have to mention uh, the, uh, what's that tag again? The Azrai, who is like a LARPer, cosplayer, they do OC content, and it's just, it's brilliant. And also when it comes to D&D content, I follow a person who their tag is banana skins with two s's on the end and they're just so funny it's absolutely ridiculous and also like they share like tips and stuff as well which happens more like if you follow like dnd tags it's, you can just find dms who share like yeah but like there's there are these and these rules but do you know how you can abuse that specific rule and make it <laughs> funny or then there's like there's some content creators that make like you know you we saw like this and this scene in this and this anime or tv series here's how you do it in D D, <laughs> and that's just absolutely amazing like the, the sheer amount of inspiration you get from that and wish that your players never ever ever find them because mm -hmm. they're brilliant there's just well, so many things you can find them but you need to look uh to search between the bar jokes which are happening there any good oh. bar <laughs> no. the bards yeah. the bard. the don't deserve this no, no. no. the bards don't deserve yeah. the, uh, the amount the amount of the amount of bar jokes of i'm going to to be this this and this and i'm just going no no <laughs> no cuz i've had it happen in my game and i'm literally just going oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> in one of my campaigns the bard is the least horny person there Oh, no. I think the worst. No, 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 no. That doesn't There is a applause. paladin in that party. A paladin. That's upsetting. <laughs> I think the worst part is that in like in my fiance has his D and D game, and the worst part is I will be playing a bard. That is the horny bard stereotype. Oh, it's the first no. time since two thousand and nine, but there's a reason why they do it. <laughs> I'm like, that could where be is that? that? <laughs> I mean, to, to be fair, one of the other content creators I follow is um, at Basics of the Game, who um, who has played other D and D besides Five E. He's played like other ones. Mm. He's a he's actually a really good chap who actually talks about mainly um, he talks about a lot of classes, but the ones I like the most is the wizards because he actually talks about how if say you cast a sleep spell on someone, you can actually team up with the barbarian and just go right, hit him. You have advantage. Go for it. Or all the other, or like actual creative ways to use um, utility spells that actually become almost like a haymaker in and of itself. Because it's not, yeah. I mean, I'm inciting now the most violent way to actually attack that goblin. Go for it. And so I actually quite enjoy his content and the way that he actually does uh, build things around. He does actually play a wizard in the meat of magic. So I managed to discover him through that. So he's actually quite an interesting character to follow. Follow through. He's the grumpy old wizard who, who just constantly reads his book. And the minute someone bothers him, he's like, "Why the hell are you bothering bothering me? Go away!" It's it's quite it's actually quite he's a quite a good chap. Great. Um, but what about your own content, uh, Jake? What, what tell us a bit more about the, the video you make and uh, what, what's oh, yeah. the, what's what's your process? You know, behind that. Um, oh dear. Um, <laughs> off with a bang. Um, <laughs> I put no thought into my content. Like, uh... at all. Um, I see an audio, I play it once, and I kind of think of three different ways that I can do it. And then as soon as I start, they go out the window. And I have oh, to right, improv yeah. on the spot. 
and like, oh yeah, I could do this, this, and this. And recently, I'm play, I am con- uh, cosplaying as a demon OC for a hashtag I made called the Splintered Mind, which is a uh, kind of it's starting off a storyline. You create a supernatural creature that's creepy and a bit intimidating, but it's all like dark humor and like it's just all insanity kind of deal. Or you could be a monster hunter kind of, kind of thing. And uh, his name is Susan. That was decided in the live stream that his name is Susan. I love him. Yep. Um, however, the funniest comments I've got is, I'm watching this at 5 a.m. in the morning with no lights on. I should not be watching this. Because I'm actually terrified. <laughs> yeah. And I will, I will always, um, for him, I have to give a lot of thought in because I want to be creepy but not intimidating and not too scary because TikTok might take it down and all that sort of thing because you have to be respectful of the guidelines, obviously. Um, so for him, the recent ones, I tend to slow the video down and for beat, for beat, and for word, I try to make sure that I match each one so that way it actually works. Uh, but with my d d Astrad, with my d d OC Astrad, the Eldritch Knight, there's no thought process whatsoever. I don't even know the guidelines, so I guess I'm a bad TikToker. <laughs> <laughs> See, has anybody else had issues? I say anybody else. I haven't actually run into issues with the guidelines yet, and I'm terrified. You guys have? Yeah. <laughs> you all have? Oh, no. I had a whole story time get taken down because oh, of violating no. the guidelines. I'm like, how have I done anything that violates your guidelines? It's like a very fine print you can't read. It's like, you're not allowed to make videos because of this. So, yeah, yeah what, what are, are the... Are the known the guidelines are they very complicated and very long or is that like um it's kind of like no no harassment no bullying uh try not to be it's almost like because i have uh cosplay swords and i'd like to and i like using them in my cosplay Ah. uh but the problem is though is that if you actually point it towards the camera and make yourself look like you have intent to do harm then it gets taken down yeah yeah so um but other times I'm just like, it's just a polyurethane longsword. How is that taking down the guidelines of being a problem when it's aiming that way or that way and purposely missing the camera to not be too intimidating? So back in 2018, I had a video where I pulled out an actual knife, right? That one's still up. I have a video from 2019 where I pulled a fan out from my pocket and that got taken down because it had a weapon in it. <laughs> Huh. Did huh. the fan have spikes? No, it was a plain black fan. Were you going to very slowly freeze someone to death by blowing <laughs> Clearly, <on them? laughs> clearly that was my intention because why else did you take it down? Hey, look. Let's go like. <laughs> hey. Hey, 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 stop hey, with whoa, that whoa, fan hand. We are live stream right now. Our guidelines on Twitch also. You're going to get whoa. us taken down. <laughs> no. I mean, maybe it's because I'm old, but no one remembers Mortal Kombat 2. There were fans <laughs> in there, they were dangerous. No, 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 nothing like that. Yeah, but I think it's also one of those things, like, but nowadays, like, you, at least at one point, like, you could have no weapon showing at all, even if they were, like, purely props, like, obviously props. Even but it's more of an issue. Taken down. Yeah, but it's a problem more, like, the guidelines are clear and very simple and very kind of, like, if you have a generalized level of common sense, like, don't bully, don't harass, you should be fine. But then in some cases, they kind of just, th- there's something with kind of how they actually enforce the rules that's very odd. And sometimes, especially with live streaming, I've noticed that some people just get banned for absolutely ridiculously. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you can, sorry, but you got banned from live stream because you're a minor, according. Like, that's the c- citation that they get from TikTok, and they're like, I'm a 40 year old man with a full beard. <laughs> yeah. the, the, and, and the age restriction for live streaming is like, so, no, it's 16, I think. 16. It's a, uh, 16 yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's 16. 16, like, and you have to have over a thousand followers to live yeah. Yeah. anyway. Yeah. But it's kind of like, how does this compute to under 16? It's like, you see the guy with like full tattoos and a full beard, and he gets banned from TikTok. He's like, what? <laughs> yeah, and usually because they're a minor, it's like yeah, 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 totally, sure, totally, yeah. So uh, I'm gonna take just a second to to remind uh, the the many people in the chat room that if they wish to, they can ask questions in the chat room, and we'll try to answer them in the video. Uh, but Hannah, okay. what about you? What about your creative process and uh, the content you create? You already mentioned a bit about it. Can you tell us more about uh, 
what you do? I'm also one of those people where I'm like, like I have probably hundreds and hundreds of audios just saved. And then I just kind of decide, like I have some that I pick out for like certain characters or certain themes, like some of my pirate themes, so I use them for a pirate character. But then I'm like, this is really cool. Or then while I'm in costume, I'm just like going through my audio, searching for the one I'm looking for. And then I'm like, this would be kind of funny. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's go with it. And then I just do, because due to like LARPing and stuff, I'm pretty used to like improvising like actions on the spot. The lip syncing I need to practice a lot because that's still one of my bane of my existence. But the actions I kind of like do a thing, I do it once and I look at it like, mm, that looks really cool, but that looks a bit awkward. So, okay, so I'll keep that part and then I'll shove the rest and then I'll just redo it like several times at some point. Or then I just nail it on the first time and I'm like, Eh, close enough. <laughs> Next. And then, so there's no, there isn't really much of a process. Like, I have my whole LARPing wardrobe and all my props and everything. So I just pick out and I'm like, hmm, what do I feel like today? And then I just pick stuff out and just try things on. And I'm like, hmm, this will do. And then I go in front of the camera and call it a day. I envy people that can do things first time. Every time I'm in tacos, <laughs> something goes wrong. Like, my hat will fall off. I'll whack the ceiling with an umbrella. I'll fall over. <laughs> My cat will get in the way. Oh no! So like does I'm that stepping mean? Stepping on my cat, and it's like ah. So, so that does that mean, Robin, that your videos are mainly uh, slapstick comedy of you knocking <laughs> things down and if falling? If you have a whole like blooper reel of me just doing things that just look <laughs> stupid. I mean, too there is a lot. There is a lot. There's a there is an audio of just going. Yeah! If you had a blooper reel, just edit all of that and just, yeah. <laughs> just try and no, let no, 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 Mac. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to quote that so bad, but there are so many swears in that audio. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, am I cheating when I speed myself for slow the speed of a video I made on, on the InShot oh. to match the lip syncing? I do that. I do that a lot. Uh, oh, that's that's, you can do so many cool tricks with the uh, uh, speed effect. Um, I, Robin, you're probably more aware of this, and Anna, because you guys cosplay, and Jack actually. But like, you know, the new trends that are coming out with like people doing the treadmill thing. It's insane. It looks incredible. What <laughs> like, the treadmill thing? I'm not. Uh, I'm not the one who should explain this. I'll leave that to everyone else. <laughs> I have no clue whether this is someone like, no, trying to like no, walking. No, no, not a clue. Are they like just like walking as if they were walking forward or something? No. Um, Robin, do you want to take this one? Because I feel like you probably explained this better than I could. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't know how recent this trend uh, had, is, but I mean, because... it did something like. No, no, it's more the. Um, there's this really, when you slow down the audio and like only have like a short half a second or something of it um, play, you like quickly run into frame, then you play the rest of the audio at like normal speed and you like sort of, oh. sl yeah, that one, like mm -hmm. slide yeah, no. closer into. Yes, that thing, no, I get it. It looks so cool. It looks I so no cool. I have no idea how it's done yet and I'm so pissed. I have no clue we don't. <laughs> I haven't worked it out. I it's so weird. I I tried it, but my phone doesn't pick up um, movements like that very well. Oh. So it just looks like I randomly appear on my screen, and it's disheartening. But one it reminds, day, maybe. Me, it reminds me when I joined TikTok at first. Uh, I was like, okay, I need to, you know, when I started uh, something, I tried to find resources to explain me or to use the the interface and so on. And I watched a couple of videos from, I think she was thirteen. Maybe I think she, it was a 13 year old girl, or, or very young. If she was 16, she looked very young, who had thousands and thousands of followers. And she posted tutorials on YouTube. And it was, I don't know. So now I'm going to explain you how to do that. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm 38. Let's, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> just sitting there, glasses on, tea in hand, just. Focused. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, does she do it? <laughs> so, um, why? What's sort of the point of uh, of this panel? Uh, it's uh, I really enjoyed my time on TikTok and consuming content there, and even producing it. 
why do you what would be your your reason or you, would you recommend to fans of tabletop pro playing games to be involved on tiktok why should they do that um to answer that i actually want to quickly address as well a comment that was left in the twitch, uh, twitch oh great about um it was by ted sujin uh, yeah about how vine seems more user friend oh, or no, creative friendly Oh, am I meant to? <laughs> I um, have like an eye on it. Everyone's it's like, all right. Yeah, I'm sort of just sort of like looking over. That's why I'm looking over like this and kind of like, okay, what is people saying now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I have, have access to it. My answers on my phone in front of me. <laughs> Ooh, but... I mean, I have it up right here on the side next to you guys. So I just, I, I'm also answering a little bit in the chat in between. But like, so if. My internet is rubbish. So my, my brother who is doing the engineering of this. Thank you so much, Nitzel, for doing that for us. Uh, is copy pasting stuff live in my Discord so I can follow what's <laughs> going on. So sorry if I'm not reactive uh, with the chat room. So yeah, that's Eugene yeah. X. Because uh, uh, earlier they said um, how Vine seems more creator friendly. Uh, I think this is back when we were talking about how it's very easy to like be banned or have your content mm -hmm. removed. Um, mm -hmm. And while I didn't use Vine myself, I can't speak to how that you know operated. The benefit of using TikTok very much seems to be, you know, community focused. Uh, you know, you can do it, you can react to people, you can share hashtags, and your for you page is literally tailored to your interests and likes. Uh, so you very quickly end up finding the things that you would enjoy, which I think is a really good reason to hop onto TikTok in the first place. Yeah, it's actually an advice I would give to people joining TikTok you should very quickly try to curate your for you page by adding a few hashtags, which are your favorite. Like if you're a fan of critical role, go put critical role hashtag in your favorites and your, your for you page will immediately look much, much closer to what you are into than, uh, than the, the regular one. Mm -hmm. um, also, if I can just uh, sort of answer one question in the chat, I saw posted in uh, one of the circles I follow in, which is the hashtag, the Luna pack, which I, which I'm part of. And that same guy that I'm talking about, the guy on TikTok, uh, Jax, he's basically, he's basically, uh, um, so yeah, hi Jax, I know you're on TikTok, I saw your, I saw your message on Discord, hi man. Anyway. Um, Hello so Jax, <laughs> thanks for joining. <laughs> um, but yeah, to answer also the question as well, um, I think TikTok can be quite creator friendly, mainly because also it's quite adaptive. So say like you put um, like, say D, D or gaming or nerd stuff um the tiktok algorithm will tailor your um, for you page to that and the more people you follow that are part of those kind of circles they will still stop like going ah oh, if this person's less known no they do the same thing you do so why don't you take a look at these people and they'll just go from there so it it does make more people aware of other tic other creators who are doing the same things that you're interested in uh for instance i I follow over 2,000 people who are just giant nerds who will play gaming and play D&D &D and do tabletop games and do Star Wars and Star Trek and all that sort of stuff. And they will all show up on my For You page as well as the people I'm following. So I get to go, oh, this person's cool. Oh, they're doing the same thing this person's doing. So it's a lot of fun to actually watch them do that stuff. Anna, why do you think RPG fans should be on TikTok? Where should I start? Because like besides what everyone else mentioned, I, I don't know. Like, you can huge... you know you can plug yourself. You could say they should be there because I have content there. They should consume mine. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, of course they should be there because I'm there. But besides <laughs> that, it's also like it's a huge fund for inspiration. As like both a creator and as kind of like enjoying content, which I at least personally really really like. It's like people make content for like that. You can do it so that you can make your own videos that show up with their videos and everything. <laughs> And that's just so much fun. I haven't done that much duetting because I'm lazy and I usually forget them while I'm in costume. And then afterwards, I'm like, Damn it. I, sh I should have done that. I should have like, gone through all my favorites and gone through everything and duetted everyone. But I just forget it because I'm tired at that point. And also, like yourself, like learning, like, for example, I'm, I've been horrible at like lip syncing and stuff, but I'm slowly starting to get it. And also, like, kind of how you move in camera, how you make it look like stiff. And you, you just learn so much about like how to do creative work and well, how do I prop up the camera and where what kind of angle actually works and how do I put it up and how do I figure out my lighting so I'm not either 
a sheet in my case or like just disappear into a background and you know, all that kind of sort of work that can be just so fun and it's so much easier because you can usually do everything by yourself with stuff you have and other people show like yeah like i saw i was part of the tag a sunderland and there people had like neon lights like it was dark and they had these bright blue and red lights and then the creators are like oh yeah the red red light that's like a like for plants to grow in like and not even for red lamp but like similar and then the blue light yeah i just pushed up the lighting on my laptop to like the brightness of it to max and have a like full screen blue picture and that creates the light i can tell you that works prop up that laptop and make it be just out of frame and you get this really beautiful effect light and it's done like you don't need professional lighting or like spend a lot of money on things like just do things and see what's fun for you and kind of enjoy your own creativity which is so much fun and also enjoy other people's and gush over their own content and so forth <laughs> robin um you know just you know <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you know. Hannah said pretty much everything I wanted to say. Oh, what? It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm stuck. Um, join TikTok. We're on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> follow us on TikTok for cool comedy? people. Yeah. So go follow all of us. That'd be great. Something I find quite fascinating, and I think it's a good practice for role playing game. You know, uh, the 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 first people I seriously played role playing games with, I met through a theater group. And by, by the way, there, there's a whole bunch of uh, theater people on TikTok, like all the people doing the lighting, people doing the performance. They, they got communities of their own uh, theater kids uh, doing stuff. But I find it fascinating on TikTok how it's a way to practice your theatric shops. You're doing expressive stuff. And it, it's fascinating because it's... Yeah, it works very well for role-playing game, but it's very, it's almost like um, silent movie performance. It's extremely expressive. Of course, it's different from one TikTok TikToker to another. Uh, if someone comes to mind, but I don't know her name. She she does those crazy expression of uh, like super needy girlfriend or or tough guy. She she goes all through the range of that. So if you are a game master or just a player and you want to to practice a range of characters or see how they can be performed by people just with the, the body language. There's amazing content there. And I'm quite curious to see how maybe a generation, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a joke of young people on TikTok, but is there a generation of actors being brewing in TikTok and you're going to see them in movies in, I don't know, five, 10 years and they're going to have this very different way of uh, performing? Uh, I, I think so. I think um, a lot of people who are trying to be aspiring actors can use TikTok as a pretty good platform to show maybe five, six videos a minute long of them actually performing and actually showing that they can adapt to, a, say, like a, an audio that's going quicker than they normally would. They can actually adapt to it and just keep doing more, like several takes to get it right. I think that, that this platform does have that potential to almost be like an um a almost like an acting reel for aspiring actors to uh, actually try and find where they actually fit in the acting community and the sheer amount of voice actors that you see on the app like oh, doing yeah. like impressions or doing lines in like this and this character's voice there are so many of them and they're so brilliant and they're like yeah still up and coming like don't really work in and you're like with that amount of talent <laughs> we need to fix this and the app is small enough with videos being short enough, unlike with YouTube, where you could get through a bunch of show reels like that and still be left with an impression by most of them because of the complete distinction uh, of content, you know, because of sound, because of style. Um, you know, people, there's the mafia tag OC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. the pirate OCs yeah. that are becoming popular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like there's all sorts of different styles that people can like truly become the best selves uh, in and still like, you know, I've lost the point a little bit, but basically <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot that leaves an impression on TikTok that 
you know, it's really you cool. You can kind of, you can go through different communities. You can go into the mafia and you could end up being like in the pirates. And it's mm. just picking, like, it's finding the place that you fit. And once you've found that place, <laughs> it's, a... it's really cool. You, can, you then can make just... friends and get popular, really. I just love how I could take that audio from you, uh, Robin, and it, it, remove it from context. And it sounds like, you know, you find a place where you belong. You could either join the mafia. <laughs> you know, um, I heard the vampire community is really good this time of year. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. They've, they've, been been improving. they've been improving. I mean, improving. You, you talk about the mafia and the pirate community, but then you go to the other side of the spectrum and there's the supernatural <laughs> community, there's the Mighty Nine community, there's Critical Role community, uh, vampire, werewolf, uh, zombies, giants, and like all these different type of communities. And I remember joining the vampire one going, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I found the demon community. And I went, now hold the phone. What is this? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was just a rabbit hole at that point. Just probably going, oh, I have a bit of this, bit of this, bit of this, bit of I've this. I've seen someone cosplay uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Like you can yes. do anything. Oh, oh my oh, God, that's wow. so awesome. That's I'd love so to awesome. watch that. Their um, pestilence videos are very, very good. Yeah, I don't know who's Ooh. seen the uh, TikTok Jesus, like his videos. I don't, yeah. I don't, oh know, God, I don't, yes. I don't know who's seen, <laughs> seen him around. Um, He's amazing. Like Scotty Warthouse, is that the name? He's yeah, so good. yeah, so good. and um, and the fact of uh, my favorite one is when guys, I'm just doing edits. I, I don't actually fire guns in my in my TikTok videos. I can't just take a gun and go bang. We <laughs> <laughs> start shuffling away into the away video. Yeah, I was impressed to find that um, uh, one of the show by the Rusty Quill, the Magnus Archive. They they've got their their own community uh, there also. I was like, wow, I didn't realize it was so big. I've been sitting I need to listen them. to the Magnus Archive in real now. life. Mm. You should check my show. <laughs> Do impressions of my show. Anyway, the what I find fascinating because people might not realize that we're talking about those communities, but it's not again, it's not like Facebook. You don't have a group page. I mean there might be one on Facebook literally, but those communities are are just communities of people watching each other's. You you don't you don't join a community by clicking on a on a thing. And then you got all the content from that community. Well, you got the hashtags, I guess, but it's not—it's not formal group. But the fact that it's somewhat informal, it makes it again more intimate than it is on other platforms. It almost incentivizes you to like put yourself in there and make yourself known in those communities, because at the end of the day, that's the only way you're going to get known mm. uh, for your content is actually by making it. There's no way to like write about it on the actual app so yeah you have to yeah. jump in um i remember when i posted my first D video and having people go oh yeah it's really good i actually like your content keep going You're like oh <laughs> yeah yeah and that's definitely like, yeah and it's definitely a thing like you have to put yourself out there. like for example since i live in finland i am finnish which also means that like i have an issue uh, with very I... big quotation marks that my <laughs> content kind of only shows for finnish people and i'm like I, I don't do Finnish content. I do all of my content in English and so forth. But I've seen like slowly and steadily, very, very, really, really bloody slowly. Like it's growing like westward. Like mm. I've gotten to like the Nordic countries, like 1% in the UK. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yes, go, 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 go. We're getting there, we're getting there. You can like yeah, see a because... flight map of where your content actually lands. Like soon you get to Spain, maybe. Yeah, I, I <laughs> hope so because. Spain is cool and Spaniards are really cool and all the cosplays they're doing. I follow a few cosplayers from there and all that. I'm like, please, Spanish go, cosplayers go. are really good. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. They're like on par with the Japanese ones and you're like, yeah. How <laughs> do they do it? But I think it's the confidence that does it. Like they can just be like, you know, it's a stereotype, but it's still kind of, there's something about it that they're like walk into a room and know that they're awesome and just do it and you're like, What's the name like of that? Them. What's the name of that model? There are two, and they're Korean models, and they do just do those crazy video. Uh, oh, it's um, Luna, Lona. It's a couple. They're very, very. Uh, they're probably all both taller than me, but one is extremely tall and looks a bit more. Uh, how to say that? Uh, like the muscle, but they're not exactly. They they they, they behave in couples and. Uh, they're the sisters. It's Lura nine 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 or something like that, and they they do those awesome videos. But it it's crazy to see people with so much 
style and you know they, they invested so much money into the uh you know the the way the, the, the apparels mm -hmm. what they're wearing the way the makeup are made and you, you see them in the street and you you would think oh those people they look a bit uh uptight not very funny and you see them do the craziest things on, on in tiktok it's really really cool mm. I think also TikTok is kind of like everyone's dirty little secret where you do all the fun stuff that you don't want, technically don't want anyone to see. Yeah. For example, <laughs> like, like I, I posted some of my videos on Instagram and even fewer from that to my Facebook because my parents can see them. And it's kind of like, you just want, but on TikTok, I'm like, nah, I'll just bring it and <laughs> I'll just do everything and see what sticks. <laughs> It'll be fine. No one will see that if a video gets a thousand views and you're like, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I have done uh like, you know when you do like a chain of like people dancing. He's like, come dance with us. Like, oh yeah, I'll come dance. You know what's gonna really care. Four hundred views later. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, like I will put effort into like a video, like loads of different camera shots, like different costumes, and like maybe I'll get four hundred, five hundred views on that, and it'd be like, okay, cool. Then like, I will whip out my phone like say some nonsense, like let's say some nonsense, put some uh, text on. I look back at my phone an hour later, it's like, you've got a thousand views now. It's like, I didn't ask for this. Watch my other stuff, please. Mm -hmm. The algorithm works in mysterious ways and it yeah. never shows yeah. people the stuff that the you actually put effort does. into. The algorithm uh -huh. doesn't like my new hair. Oh. The algorithm Aww. doesn't like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had a lot of views for like my out of cosplay stuff when I had brown hair, and now I have colorful hair. They're like, no, nope, no, nope. oh. to keep you from the people. It like spins a wheel every day. It's like today we're going to prioritize this person's videos. That's yeah, it. It's like uh, I, I see it as almost like, oh, I'm gonna drink something and then we're gonna throw it on the dartboard <laughs> and see what hits. It never this is TikTok in a nutshell, uh, honestly. Yeah. Um, uh, however, I will say this is um, one audio that I love seeing uh, from uh, a guy who dresses up as a, a Papa Voodoo. I don't know if anyone's watched this stuff when he's like, he's got his face paint on and he's got this top hat on. And he goes, you will post three times a day for the TikTok algorithm. And I'm just like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it, it literally is like you have to post like three times the amount on TikTok at any given time. And you have to do it every single day. He's like, well, I've got a life to do. It. And then it's almost like him going, leaning into the camera going, you will deliver what you've, <laughs> asked, what you've asked for. And this is why we have the drafts. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's true. <laughs> That's Saving a lifesaver. Yeah. I've run out of drafts, though, so I need to record more. Ugh. Oh, uh, no. Like See ya. I'm I think I... Oh, no, so... I only have 22 drops left. So I'm the yeah. outro. <laughs> oh, no, a... 22. I have, like, 15. Yeah, so some of these are like really like long-term project like when you switch characters in like every shot for on like this tight beat and i'm like why why am i doing this because it be, will be really cool when it's done and no one will see it so we're talking about drafts and uh, plenty of stuff actually it's a good segue my favorite sentence uh what would you or would you what advice is yours for a fan of tabletop role playing games and D&D &D who want to create content on TikTok? What, what do you advise them to do? What should they start with? Or they should steal. they steal? Steal from other creators. That's the whole, <laughs> like, the algorithm's like, this was popular. If you do this, you'll get a leg up onto, like, the ladder. Mm. Pretty much. Take audios, yeah. take structures, take formats, like, yeah. anything you can. But also take, take their um, house, take their cat. Yeah. <laughs> take their bank you account know, details. Take yeah, all the, all the, them. Yeah, take them. <laughs> um, all the advice I can give is, is just go for it. You don't know until you actually have tried it. Um, if it flops, okay, don't do it. Uh, but the weird thing is if it flops and then you tr do it again when it's a bit more updated and you have a bit more of a better cosplay on and it gets a thousand views, you're like, what the what? So fine. <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, all I can say is go for it. That's all I can actually generally comment on it because otherwise you don't know unless you've actually literally done it yourself but yeah definitely have a library of audios that you can just sort of pull from and see what works and what doesn't work and have fun with it obviously because if you're not having fun then don't do it a lot of favorited audio i don't know how much i got in my app <laughs> Thank, thankfully we cannot see that 
Mm. Yeah, they haven't put a number on it, and I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go back and look through all of those? Yeah. I, also just, like, I lose audios in my favorites. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, and also I saw like, someone... Uh, actually, like, yeah, uh, okay, fine. Like, Secret. one thing, like, for newbies is also to know, like, that's that's really important. Well, for anything, anyone who's on TikTok, like, at least I've noticed, like, TikTok goes for the long game. Don't expect, like, on Instagram, for example, you, you're supposed to hit that, like, a few hours after you post it. If it doesn't make it, then it will never make it. TikTok, I give it a few months. Then you <laughs> know what happens with it. Like, don't be worried about, like, views and such, like, in the beginning, because you won't get them in the, in the beginning. Like, that won't happen. But, like, pop in with, like, five, six videos that you've posted, like, a few, like, on, like, once a day or something. Let them, and then let them see what happens to them in, like, the coming few weeks that's how you figure it out. Like, other than that, you, you just have to keep on doing whatever you're doing and have fun with it. And then something will happen somewhere in the back of the line and hopefully something will be popular. And one of the few videos popular, and one of, usually like, something that I've seen people give us a hint is like, the first one out of the first five or six videos you post will probably like get a lot of views and go like on a lot of people's for you pages. After that, it simmers down a little bit because it's kind of trying to, figure out what you're doing so like do that see what sticks and then just roll stuff out and see what happens mm -hmm. and make content that makes you laugh as well like yes. there's no point in making Absolutely. content specifically for an audience you don't care about you don't want to interact with if you can't watch your video back after you've made it and just find humor in it then don't or, post it or question your insanity as to why you made it yeah, that is also the. Oh, I do that a lot. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> no, because I've, I've, uh, one of my tags is that um, it was my Demon OC singing a song, and literally all the caption was says, "I have no words for this. I just, I just lost the plot." <laughs> that was oh, my yeah, only I response. One last night of just, you know, that whole like vape, no flute thing. I did yeah. that in taco mm -hmm. with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know why I made it. What compelled me to make it? I don't know if I had a bit too much to drink. <laughs> it happened. I, I made it. It happened. It's there. It's one of the most viewed taco things I've ever made. Brilliant. Oh, <laughs> that's that's usually how it goes. Yeah. I think, I think your I'll point of different. doing things that make you laugh is a good one because don't try to do things that make your wife or friends laugh because <laughs> that's not what's popular on TikTok. I was tempted to do one uh, with my wife, you know, with the, showing the video and then it's uh, it's a little bit funny, but not really. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, the, the TikTok videos I like and people I do, and, and the one I do that people like on TikTok, when I show them to friends, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you don't understand. It's because it's yeah. funny. It's I swear, a hundred <laughs> times out of the people, and this no, other guy did it with a hat, and it was great. And the, the, the mind's gonna tw uh, you know, twist on it. I swear it's funny. I swear <laughs> it's right here where it's funny. If you just watch this TikTok, I swear it's really funny. <laughs> I still keep spamming like like our like IRL D and D group. Like we have this group chat that's going on for like random stuff not D, D talk but the, like random memes and stuff and i keep spamming it with tiktoks and everyone's like i don't think anyone's ever answered to any of this <laughs> and i still keep doing it because i'm like they find it funny they just don't dare to say it and i'll just keep going yeah. this part is that now one people one person from the group actually joined tiktok and is going to start making his own content so Yay. i'm an Yay. enabler Yay. good for him congratulations <laughs> What's it? What's uh, their handle? We can. We can all that follow is, that. He hasn't been giving it to me yet. You want to throw him under the bus like that? And I would be thinking, I'm making through. it. I'm making it. I don't know what's happening, but something oh. tonight. I don't know what his handle is. He doesn't even follow me yet. He just like literally oh. just got it in, and he doesn't even know how to follow people. And I'm like, sweet summer child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. will be I, fine. I, I, I've heard that that line of when someone goes, oh, I've done this, and so you hear someone go, oh, you sweet summer child. Yes. <laughs> this is always like that <laughs> sigh, and that kind of like, I feel sorry I... for you. <laughs> yeah, oh, just yeah. you wait, give it a month or two, it'll be all down here. There's, yeah. there's a question in the chat room, which is very easy, easy to, to answer, at least uh, not in audio, but in video. Uh, 
Rigos Summoso, sorry for mispronouncing your, your avatar. Uh, you want to follow all of us. Uh, what are the, account, the t TikTok accounts of everyone here? Well, actually, it's written right under each everybody's little window. So that's not the, the Twitter handle, that's the TikTok handle of each of us. But uh, yeah, maybe say it. Each of you could say it again. Um, people, e what ego, yeah, um, ego summer surge just said, just call me Jax. That's Jax, by the way, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, Jason V one three one. That's me. Uh, that's my handle. Um, uh, I'm Otis Clues on the app, uh, but you can just call me Kestrel because that's my name. Uh, I can be found at Alikai dot Wonderland, and. <laughs> I can be found with that handle essentially everywhere, or you can go to my website, alikaiwonderland.com, and go from there and follow all of my shite from there, because that's where <laughs> I have linked everything for simplicity's sake. Perfect. And you can find me at round underscore Robin. I can also type everything down in the chat room, so in a bit you can actually see the spellings of everything as soon as, yeah, I, and as, you, soon as I find the spellings. And you can find me at Rollist <laughs> Murder everywhere. Yeah. We everywhere. wouldn't be here without the host. Twitter, so, Instagram. So <laughs> where credit is due. Rollist is French for role player. It's R-O-L-I-S-T-E-S-P-O-D. Learning every day. So I was yeah. about to say that. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. It Great was lines. a good question, but it's kind of rushing us into the goodbyes, it feels. It feels like goodbyes giving uh, all details Aww. like that. Uh, anyone has anything that they want to to discuss? I really like the... You know the content that isn't just cosplay or comedy, like the ones that are specifically unique to like a specific account? There's one account I follow called Mother Magpie, who's been doing uh paintings of spell cards oh. and poetry for each class in D D. then that's cute this is so good i recommend everyone follow her and like look at her content because it's i'm now going through my favorites to find the inspiration for this book <laughs> because i saw someone on tiktok making a character book for their D D character and i was like i have to do that and now I own everything. Was that the person that has like the really in depth notebooks of all their characters? Yes. Because uh, I think I recently followed them. One month ago, dot at Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> Great tag. <laughs> we, we did not even mention. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. They made like a uh, six part yeah. series of just Aww. making a character book. Very good. Uh, I'm. I'm that's cool. Uh, I'm gonna do the plug again of uh, at Basics of the Game because he has done some pretty good, not just cosplay content, but also innovative D and D uh, cosplay content. Uh, to sort of describe of going, you know, if you're a wizard, if you have this spell, fireball is not only the answer to everything. There are other things in your arsenal that you can use that are just as effective as this spell. And da 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 da. He, a person just every time I see him, he's like, Hello, it's me again, and it's time for wizard talk. And it's just kind of like, hey. oh. <laughs> Yeah, because he always, start, he always starts with the hello, and it's always nice to see, oh, see that. Nice. Um, I'm, just, I'm browsing through my own for you, uh, Justin Rash underscore official. I someone who does uh, stop motion, uh, with uh, like puppets, like I'm watching one, uh with Reaper from Overwatch. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's it's truly amazing what, what it does. There's so much stuff like, you got painters, you got digital artists, you got musicians, you got singers, you got... Oh, if I if I could talk about like all of my favorite content creators on TikTok, I think we'd be here for another five hours. So I'm just gonna yeah, just it, 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 myself yeah, we, yeah, we'd do that. Um, <laughs> there is a question by Malchus underscore noise of, what a tag slash cosplay slash OC slash idea you guys would really like to do but haven't yet? Oh, that's a good question. <sighs> I yesterday or the day before I filmed a bunch of mafia uh, cosplay content <laughs> because I really want to <laughs> cosplay mafia stuff, but I haven't released any of it yet, and I don't know if I even plan on doing it, or releasing it ever, because that's not what my account is at all. It would be like, oh, comedy skit. Now a really weird video you haven't seen from me before, guys. Comedy skit, and now we're in the mafia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, comedic, comedic, 
you know, funny, funny, funny. It's <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> just out of the field. Um, I've been obsessed with that title for so long now. But, you know, that's what I would do. <laughs> Uh, for mm-hmm. me, it's actually the exact same because I actually have a suit in my wardrobe, like a proper three-piece suit with a waistcoat and actual jacket and it has an inside pocket where I could put a prop. That would be handy. And I also have a brown fedora hanged up on my wall that I could put mm-hmm. on and use as almost like a detective or as an actual mafia person just walking around the streets. I've got Detective. almost like this... this yeah, it's this, this almost this awesome... That is an awesome jacket, by the way. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's an awesome jacket. <laughs> I, I love I love an actual mafia person. For for a second, I was, I was afraid. He said, "I actually have in my cupboard." <laughs> yeah, you know, there's something there's something we don't talk about here. Okay, we're just gonna leave it at that. You got and some concrete with. <laughs> uh, yeah. What what would I like to do? I haven't done yet. I don't know. I, I don't know many music bits I put on the side. I think I should do some, yeah, some uh, some critical roles on that. I mean, it's like the most common thing you will find online uh, on TikTok, but I never actually done one. I would say do it because it's a lot of fun yeah. to do. It's a lot. Yeah. It's so much fun to actually try to do it. Yeah, but uh, I don't have any cosplay, so I sort of have OCs now. They sort of yeah. found their way in my TikToks by their own, uh, but they're like, yeah, the my OCs are. Uh, there's the needy, but the um, oh, what's it, what's it called? Um, uh, th- there's one who's a uh, a fan of D and D who never played only D and D and homebrews everything in D and D. There's one who's a someone who plays all the games, but's not committed to any game. So and he's always trying to have the D and D player to play another role playing game. Uh, and then I got a fan of World of Darkness, who was very nice, but comes across as gatekeepy. And uh, mm. and and finally a critter who does cosplay, but he, he picked the easiest cosplay, which is uh, Retro Travis uh, with the. Um... <laughs> I did a video, but it was cool with the uh, the team from uh, what is it called Full House, because everybody was doing that. You do your yeah. all your RCs with the team of Full House. Um, I have actually done a full completed chain of the Full House soundtrack with my D and D group, The Wayfaring Strangers. I was the one who started it, and we walked out, and I was the first one to start it, and then everyone else just sort of just joined in. Uh, it was it was such a weird thing because it was almost like a choose your character moment of you can either pick Astra or Kelsey, the fighter, or uh, Naomi the Warlock or Corvus the uh, the Rabbit Folk Ranger or Gnar the the Half Dark Elf Rogue and we have all these different stories that that intertwine to each other. But um, uh, Jax also asked, "Is uh, would you guys be willing to collab or D and D content?" Yes. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> that would be that would be. But awesome they to do. it already. As if I'm not completely involved with enough D and D campaigns already. Yeah, I can totally do one more. I'm not an addict. Yeah. <laughs> I do um, not crave violence. I mean, if we if we were a mother, I crave if, violence. <laughs> oh yeah, I love that. I love that mother, audio. Mother, I crave violence. Because I've seen people do it with mother, their pets, and I've I've seen I've seen um <laughs> I've seen people hold their cats, and the cats looking around and look straight at the camera and, and at the <laughs> I crave violence moment, which is so brilliant. <laughs> What I have never done is uh, a dance, you know, like the what's the name of the, the dance. dance which which is happening right now? The no, the the one the dun, 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 dun. oh, no, you know that one. I think I think that's yeah, a fairly new one. one. There's probably a and new might one. I might know what you're talking about. Yeah. But it's funny because now with the lockdown and the, the weather, which was better, my neighbors started playing music very loud outside. And the thing is, I, I'm completely disconnected of what is popular at the moment. So, so now I'm listening, I'm hearing songs more than 15 seconds of them because I know <laughs> most of the popular songs, but only 50 seconds of them through TikTok. I've actually added a few songs to my Spotify playlist from TikTok. And I'm like, wait yeah. a minute, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard like two different audios of um, I can't remember what it's like, it's like it is. It's like I'll be there to catch you when you fall, and if they laugh, they'll screw them all. Kind of, kind of audio, oh, mm. and that is from the exact same song of 
tell me right here how does it feel to be up there when i'm down here and i'm the one who put you up there it's the exact same song and i had no idea wow. i'm like oh <laughs> that that makes sense. Sense. yeah i like that there's a couple of ones in french <laughs> i like the yeah. like uh, i'd really like to do one with tourné dans le vide huh? When you you, it's a song we say, tourne tourne dans le vide vide, and it's yeah. kind of sad. And the idea is you you turn on yourself and you you just put questions that people regularly stupid questions people regularly ask you. So yeah. it's a that ball I said, but I want at one point I wanted to do that with Brexit, but what my parents <laughs> were asking like, are you coming? Are you coming back to Belgium? Oh, oh things like in the UK, uh, and. Oh, the amount of questions yeah, I've, well, I've heard, I've heard care. about that. It's, 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 it's an astounding number. You could do that with D&D, like, oh, do you do that in the bedroom? Are you wearing costumes? Oh, or? my God. No, oh. no, 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 no. Are you that kind of dungeon master? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> or, or the, uh, no, to be fair, to be fair, the audio is like, how can you, how can you tell to someone who's into, you know, adult things or D and D? Just ask them what a dungeon master is. <laughs> <laughs> That's so brilliant. Is it, is it a bit the same as this one, the other sound with um, Yeah, the uh, it's like oh oh, D, oh is D, does D and D worship the devil and then it gets like a bit more intense. It's like oh, I'll bet you do that in the bedroom, and then he's just like really going. Yeah, I've seen I've seen so many of that. It's just like a really dumb like oh, so you do that, and then he just like yeah, just keep on vibing. I love that so much. It's so brilliant. Maybe we can, we can close on that. Can each of us <laughs> try to mouth out your favorite uh, sound bit from uh, oh. TikTok? Oh, God. Oh, dear. I'm going to look up my feed <laughs> if I remember one. No, I'm going to have to do the same. I'm just like, um, give me a moment. Everybody pretend. You, you know this song, everybody come hang. Wow, you're right, right, off, the, one. right off the bat. Bang, bang, bang. bang. Oh, amazing. Here we go. I'm way too young to lie here forever. I'm way too old to trust. So whatever, come hang. Let's go out with a bang. Hey. Um, well done, yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, amazing. Um... Your turn. I've done mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> I'm gonna do mine before someone takes it. Uh, it's the, uh, it's the, it's the dance room one. The hey hey do 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 hey hey and it's always um you you use the the function but this function in TikTok you you got a special effects so it looks like you are within a crowd. And oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah yeah! Lose control, yeah control, 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 lose control. control. <laughs> the, one I, the one I did was uh, because the idea is you you put. Explaining a joke again, it's so hilarious to explain a joke to people. <laughs> that, that you always make a statement uh, finished by, I don't know, I didn't read the book. Yeah, or, or I didn't yeah, read yeah. the movie, or I didn't play the game. So, so mine was Shackleton, Shackleton and the crew when they get beyond the mountains of madness. I don't know, I didn't read the book. And the idea was they were partying for the fans of Call of Tulu there. That's all obscure. I go with my own TikTok. Mm. 11 likes. Thank you to all 10 of you and myself for liking my own videos. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. Anna, um, your turn. Yeah, I, I, will, I will have to say probably my most viewed one is the one that I didn't expect it to get the most views is I was in my Demon OC and it was the Riddick cue of you made three mistakes. First, you took the contract. Second, you came light, a four-man crew fucking insulting but the worst mistake you made and i just picked up a picked up my my own like water gun ammo rack and it just went empty gun clip <laughs> that is my favorite <laughs> audio just because it, it's it's just this, it's, it's just the most confident thing i could do and it's got like over a thousand views and i'm like what happened <laughs> um if i had to choose another one though it's the we are we are not your ordinary family you know, i like i like that one because it's sort of like the amount of communities that use that and do almost like a massive chain yeah, of just so going, weird. yes, I'm weird, I know I'm weird, and I don't care, and I like who I am. That's the one that I like most, beyond the Reddit quotes. I uh, just check what my most popular, I, I was quite proud of this one. Uh, it was popular even outside TikTok. Uh, it was a bit I found out later from uh, The Office. 
it was uh, if you do that, I'm gonna do that. Oh yeah, you that, you're gonna do uh, that. If you do that, you're gonna do that. And I did it with my my OC who, who who wants people to play something else than Dungeons and Dragons, really not based on myself. Uh, and it was like if you want to do Star Wars, you use the Star Wars D6 or, or West End games. If you want to, what was it? What was it? Or if you want to play Lord of the Ring, you use One Ring from Cubicle Seven. If you want to play John Wick, you use Feng Shui. <laughs> <And> it was. <laughs> I think my favorite one, the joke I'm most proud of, uh, uses the True Jackson VP. Being like, my head, my head, to my toes, and I see it's how you know. Yes, stand cool, because that's how we do. Yeah. And uh, what I did was, I dressed up as a rogue uh, with the caption, the kleptomania leaving my body. Uh, with oh. the pallet and <laughs> <very slightly>. yeah. <laughs> my favorite one's about that is um, when, some, when someone is in the corner of, Someone told me to be happy, so my depression is leaving my body as they're dancing <laughs> to it. And I'm yeah. just like... <laughs> but I'm, I'm so proud of that one. Yeah, because it's just like, I mean, come on. <laughs> you can't help but laugh at it. because it's true. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> my most popular ones are my bath bomb videos, which is really sad. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean... Oh. It's still there's not a lot of look at I'm like, yeah, like a few videos. And I had one video that got like eighteen thousand views. As well as like wow. my name, my age, oh, my yeah. favorite color. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. this out of <laughs> everything. And I got like sixteen thousand of those in a day. Yeah. Maybe, maybe because uh, of how much you're in cosplay, they eventually get to see almost like a little a snippet of who you are and and all the cosplay. It's like, yeah, yeah, this is who I, this is my name. This is how old I am. This is my favorite color. It kind of gives like a, them almost like to connect you. It's like, oh yeah, I like that color. Oh, that's a nice name. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I think it was. I think I really hit like in the peak spot of the trend. I think that's also why yeah, it really really popular. That's also, yeah, that's also yeah. So it's Trends. like. Trends fluctuate all the time, and mm -hmm. got, and if you jump on one, you get a bunch of views on it. You're like, what did I do? Mm. Where did I go right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they still come like. Yeah. I don't do that many music things. Like, holy shit, I've been scrolling through fevers. Like, like, come on, something with music in. It. But well, I do I, like odd random audios. You want a sad like, story? The most popular thing I ever did on TikTok was leave a comment on somebody else's phone. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was the video of a very wealthy mansion being flooded or at risk of being flooded mm -hmm. and i just replied sorry i cannot hear over the sound of the world's smallest violin i'm playing <laughs> <laughs> and i've got ten thousand likes and i still got them at the moment <laughs> yeah that, that is um yeah, I've had similar. I've had similar comments where with someone, with some, when uh, oh, I can't remember her name, but she's like, she's a quite a famous like, um, she's done one shots with other TikTokers who play D and D, uh, and it's when the the party's starting to leave and go home, and you're the DM, and you know that you if you play one more hour, they'll get to a key point, and it's like Gary. Get in here and you will finish your dessert. And I put a comment. <laughs> I put a comment in. Okay, yeah, we can play a few more hours. And she actually replied to that, going, maybe five or six. <laughs> <laughs> she replied to that, went, yeah. To be fair, I've done the exact same thing. Going, come on, we can play one more hour, one more hour, and we'll be, we'll be good, we'll be good, we'll be good. Q four hours later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Yeah. So, well, I yeah. had a DC game today that left off last week with our warlock. Almost dying. Oh no! <gasps> oh no! I mean, so our all left it there, and now we're like, oh. <sighs> that's the work that I've done. That's... To be fair, to be fair, I've done that to the party when a player is like being dragged to the underworld at one point, <gasps> and like they were being dragged. They, the thing is, they pulled out um, an Oryx horse, they threw it on the floor, they got on it, it turned into a nightmare. Which, on a very, very unlucky roll, it can take you to the underworld and drop you off in Hades, and you can't go back. Jesus. A bard oh, did that, no. ended up in Tartarus in the underworld. Bear in mind, that's another plane of existence, completely separate to D&D. &D. And I went, and that's where we're going to leave it off. And everyone just stood up going, what is wrong with you? I agree with them, but it's wrong with you. Uh, I mean, at least you're not stuck mid-boss battle because we stopped playing due to the state of the realm currently and we haven't been able to play. So we've been stuck in middle of boss battle for a couple of months. Oh, no. <laughs> I oh crave violin so bad. <laughs> my DM likes moving it in awkward places because he left it once, you know, the whole drow portal. So it's like, Nat's honey, he jumps through the drow portal and you never saw Shun again. <laughs> and that's where we're going to leave it. 
Oh. Now what do I do? That's my character. He's in another plane of existence. Like, what do I do? Rude. <laughs> on that, on things which could go on and on and on for hours, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. come to an end. Sadly, all, so. all, all good things have to come to an end. I, I must say, it was a. a <laughs> It was it was a bit of a crazy uh, idea I had to make this panel about TikTok. I don't think anyone recorded something about that, and uh, I'm very proud uh, to have pulled it. But uh, what I'm most proud of is that I assembled a very energetic, enthusiastic, awesome cast of guests. You were truly uh, unbelievable, the four of you. Uh, you had a great energy. Thank you so much. To finish on that, uh, could you, each of you, plug whatever you want to, to plug, including uh, yourself, Ooh. and tell people where they can find you again uh, if you wish to be found? Because sometimes people don't. Robin, spotlight oh. on you. You're, you're my spotlight <laughs> person. <Jesus. laughs> um, can I shamelessly plug my own YouTube? Um, yeah, go ahead. So I'm Robin Roulette on YouTube, and I usually just I have a few dances up from Comic Con. So I was a guest at MCM London Comic Con last year, and I've got a few of my covers up of just me singing random things. So that's that's that. And you can find me on TikTok at Ram Robin and Instagram Great. at Roulette Cause. Side note: uh, once uh, things are different. And we've got MCM <laughs> Comic Con again. Uh, I hope to to meet uh, uh, a few of them, if not all of you. Uh, that would be uh, really awesome. And uh, uh, yeah, maybe maybe yeah. show up to Dragon Meet if you're not too far from uh, from London and you want a, a one day truly awesome convention. It's not like MCM; it's different, but uh, it's really someday. Nice. Someday. Someday. <laughs> someday. I mean, well, to be fair, to, 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 yeah, someday out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Or maybe we'll just flee to Finland, where things are. Yes, too. Yeah. So we will host a whole DD. I, I mean, I mean, I know full well it's somewhere in Germany. There is an entire village dedicated to D and I know somewhere in Germany there is an entire village that's been built that has NPCs that actually live there and actually actually a tavern. There is pubs and there are quests. I cannot wait to go there and just break all awesome. their pots. I am the big bad. <laughs> what? Um, uh, I don't know if I should go next or if anyone else wants to go yeah, next. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you, you just did. Yeah, <laughs> true. Uh, yeah, I don't mean to. I, when I'm nervous, I. I yeah, I play myself a lot. I'm, I'm digging my hole here and I'm going to sit. Oh, stop, um, stop. You, you're just grabbing the microphone and keeping it to yourself. <laughs> just just plug all... yourself and say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, at Jason V131 at TikTok, and that's the only one I'm going to plug. Everyone else go. Oh, oh short. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can find me uh, as Oat Cookie. Drop the E from that spelling um, on Instagram and Twitter, where I don't really post much, but there are pictures and words that I've said in the past. Obviously, Otis Clues is where you can find me on TikTok. And if you want to listen to the band I'm in, uh, you can find me on Spotify or other music services. Uh, the Neighbors Kids. We could make TikTok with your music. <laughs> yeah, it's, I need to get it on there somehow first, but yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's appropriate for TikTok. Um, oh. More oh. so that it wouldn't get views. What do you not... mean? You're too good for TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> Dell is on TikTok. It's, TikTok. <laughs> you know, it's just not trend worthy, you know? It's not got those like poppy beats. It's all very strange. Um, but yeah, if you're so inclined to listen to some new music, then go right ahead. That's the Neighbors Kids on Spotify or Amazon or wherever you find your music. Great. Awesome. Well, I guess I'll go with last then, sadly. <laughs> last but not least. We don't read, don't don't read too much into that. It's, uh, you know, it needs to be someone. Someone has to do it and I will be the most uh, memorable. Let, let's, to it. let's say that you're going to... Sorry, I apologize in advance, but let's say you're going <laughs> to finish that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It took <laughs> me too long. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was a skip in my brain. <laughs> well, either way, you can find me on TikTok at alikai.wonderland. And if you want to find me anywhere else on the internet, you can go to my website and that works as my blog. That's alikaiwonderland.com. And if you follow my blog, you will also slowly but steadily start getting work in progress on how I am creating my own D&D &D setting. 
and I hopefully will publish at some point. Oh, wow. Ooh, oh, yes. oh I, I need to have you on the show to tell me about that then. Uh, it would be nice to have yes. you for a, a cafe rolling. We should, at some, ah, at some come point. On. It's still very work. work in progress. I'm just slowly <laughs> starting to announce that. Yeah, I, I, it's starting to solidify that. Yeah, I will actually be making my own DVDs. I think I'm hoping to get it, it published. At it some just point, means so. it's a scoop at this stage. I can be the first one to interview you. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> organize that. So if people want to catch that, it's probably gonna happen on Café Rollist, which is a live stream I'm doing uh, two to three times per week. The next one's going to be with a gentleman from Onyx Path Publishing. Uh, uh, it's going to be on Monday. Uh, please go check the, the website or my social media to find out where it, when it is. On Wednesday, who is it on Wednesday? I don't remember. It's somebody nice on Wednesday, but I don't remember who that is. I apologize. Yeah, I should. <laughs> I mean, I, oh yeah, of course. It's Jonathan from the London RPG community who takes care of my newsletter and who's a, an awesome person. So he's going to be telling us uh, what's going on in his life uh, quite a bit, uh, from what I know. Uh, please do check the content from the Rollis podcast, the other the Rollis present we recorded, but also the podcast podcast, the Rollis podcast, uh, which is the show of tabletop RPG fans across the channel, the pond and beyond. It can be quite quirky and fun. Or if you want to hear about Jonathan's club, the London RPG community, our latest series was an actual play, four parts, mixing an interview, dungeon mastered by London RPG community. It was quite cool. It's four parts. I put a lot of work in it. Please go check it out. Uh, thank you so much to the RPG Academy who was hosting us. Uh, you can check the Patreon of the RPG Academy or the Patreon of the Rollist. We got uh, all separate ones. But we, we f the thing we got in common, we do this out of our passion for the hobby. But we do have expense. And sometimes we'd like to invest in a better internet connection, for instance, for this fee to be better for <laughs> all of you. Uh, also, one finish thing. I got a lot of stuff to plug. I do a lot of things. I am uh, developing my own game uh, for the very first time, and I'm running playtests online. So if people want to play sessions of a story game called Paris Gondo, the life-saving magic of inventorying, please join me. It's a short comedic story game in which uh, the game starts when the adventure finishes, just after you defeated the big bad enemy and you got the loot and you're going to decide what you keep what you don't keep and then you're going to find out if you make your journey home or if you carry too much stuff maybe or maybe you didn't keep stuff which were emotionally meaningful enough for you so you're going to make it home but you're going to live a, a sad life uh, which was would be unfulfilled oh. it's all in, <laughs> for people who didn't get the reference it's all inspired by Marie Kondo uh, who's got a show <laughs> on oh. Netflix Ooh, ooh, now I'm intrigued. Oh, a round of applause, a round of applause. Yeah, I'd, I'd really like a session with the four of you. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone. See you for the race present next month. I'm not sure yet uh, what it will be about. So we'll find out together. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.